the Giants are six and one. You can put a pun on that if you want. Not one O N E. How about W O N six and one? Because they just they find ways to win games. That's all this Giants team does, man. Very close. Saquon Barkley almost closed it out for us at the end of the game. Like in fact, he was getting balled up by the Jaguars defense all day, but then towards the end in the fourth quarter i want to say in the last five minutes right at one point in the fourth quarter he was 18 carries for 66 yards three carries later he's 21 carries for 106 yards he just turned on the jets he just started as kb said during the stream saquon started saquoning during the fourth quarter and all of a sudden we're driving down the field we already have the lead at this point i think it's 23 to 17 if i'm remembering correctly and he tries to not get out of bounds. He tries to slide before he hits out of bounds, but he accidentally slid out of bounds and left about a minute and five seconds on the clock. Now, if he did slide out of bounds, the clock kept ticking down and there was like 30 something seconds left or like low 40 seconds left on the clock. And this game would have basically been over because, you know, you take the delay of game, take the field goal, bam. I mean, take the field goal, bam. So it was 20 to 17 at that point, not 23 to 17, my bad. We still took the field goal. We kick it back to Jacksonville, and Jacksonville, who's had help from the refs all day because of that ridiculous earlier Dexter Lawrence call for roughing the passer, where all he did was grab T-Law's jersey. If you want to call that some type of defensive holding or, like, I don't know, some version of horse collar or whatever, fine. But roughing the passer on that is ludicrous. Either way, get the ball back. It's, uh, it's like second or a long third down. Bam, we got a fumble recovery. We're like, oh, that's it turned over i think that was the first of two roughing the passer calls on that play whatever the case is they got a ref's help and fumble recovery turned out not being it then a couple plays later fabian monroe shout out to him mad respect to him uh you know learned this from the brock broadcast when wink try uh tried to get him to sign you know went up to him when we needed that corner help he told him that you're a great player you're great at tackling just keep playing football the right way something along those lines and like people will notice you and fabian monroe has been a massive big addition to this team love that guy he gets what is supposed to be an interception that gets turned over i think it was <sighs> illegal hands to the face dane belton to evan ingram and then the replay shows and once again everybody on the you know the commentary team they're like they don't see any illegal hands to the face well that's the second time that drive alone the refs are trying to like halt the giants momentum and then the third time was when we got a, a sack i'm pretty sure but they call it a roughing... No, not a sack. It could have been a sack. But Trevor Lawrence makes a humongous throw on 4th and 15. I think it was Kayvon that got on him or Leonard Williams. And they called that a roughing the passer. And then all of a sudden, that 4th and 15 tacked onto that is like an another 10 yards or so. Incredible. It's just... Man. 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 Then the defense shows up still. Trevor Lawrence makes another great throw that should have been the wide receiver Christian Kirk could have stretched or leaned into the end zone. Xavier McKinney's right there, tackles him, knocks him back a little bit. All of a sudden, like three or four white jerseys come careening in. Uh, uh, just a complete crowd of white jerseys pushing Christian Kirk back. They don't allow him to drop down to stop the clock. They don't allow him to go forward to get the touchdown and the win. They keep him upright and they keep him away. Time expires. Giants win. Giants are 6-1. and one. This team just finds ways. We were down two offensive linemen very, very early in the game. Ben Bredesen, wishing him the best. Evan Neal, of course, the bigger one. Probably the biggest one because he's been playing great football since week four. Evan Neal, it's, you know, reported maybe something with the MCL. I hope he's okay. Adoree Jackson actually got some type of... He was out with a concussion or something. I'm pretty sure this game, but he came back in. He came back in in the fourth quarter. He played well. He had a great pass breakups throughout the fourth quarter. But we were injured once again. Daniel Bellinger went out with a bloody eye. And the, the Jaguar that did that, I'm still saying, should get suspended and fined. That should have been illegal hands to the face. You want to call illegal hands to the face on the Giants? You should have done that in the first half. I think it was the second quarter when Daniel Bellinger got poked in the eye and he started bleeding. I'm saying all this to say even this was already one of the most injured teams in the leagues and we were 5-1. We got even more injured during the game and we still come out with the win. 
The defense showed up in the end after I was annoyed with them throughout the game. They were being cut up by T-Law. They were being cut up by Travis Etienne. They came up in the end. The offense and rushing game came up in the end. Every single week during the stream, you guys see it. Every single week, I'm, I get angry and frustrated with Mike Kafka because I feel like he should be running the ball more. And he did it in the fourth quarter. Can't complain. Masterclass from Saquon Barkley. Masterclass from the coaching staff. And I need, I absolutely must, I have to give props and say masterclass from Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones played an amazing game today, especially in that first half through the air. He was cutting up the Jaguars defense. That Darius Slayton touchdown pass was one of the best throws I've seen him made in his four-year career. He was making long third-down conversion throws. Before Wandale got hit, it looked like he got nicked up a little bit. Wandale looked, looked like he was going to have a big game. So did Darius Slayton. Marcus Johnson got on my nerves. Couldn't catch a ball to save his life. Richie James dropped a couple of balls. It's so funny that Evan Ingram was catching everything on the field, but our wide receivers couldn't. Didn't matter. Daniel Jones was still making plays through the air. He was making plays on the ground with his feet. It's the first time since 2010 that the Giants in a game had two people with over 100 yards rushing, Saquon Barkley and Daniel Jones. That's history making. That's the quarterback making plays to, you know, to get the team to win and also fighting for that second contract. He is doing a lot of good things. You know, a lot of people say the Packers was his best game. A lot of people say the Ravens was his best game. There's going to be a lot of people now saying that this was his best game. He finished with over 200 yards passing and over 100 yards rushing. There's not a lot of quarterbacks in the NFL that can do that. When he's on, when he's hitting his throws, when he's making his runs, he plays really, really good. And if he continues to play like this throughout the season, he's going to be here next year. You know, I didn't think I'd find myself in a position to say that, but if he continues to play like this throughout the rest of the season, he's going to get another contract with us because it's winning us football games. And this is now two to three games in a row where he's the one winning us the football game. Saquon Barkley is a big part of it, but without Daniel Jones, we lose this game in the first half. It's as simple as that. We lose this game because the wide receivers can't catch. Definitely need to give that man his credit. Definitely needs to give Brian Dable his credit. We're 6-1. and one. The media is going to continue to say that we're the worst 6-1 and one team in football. They didn't say it in those words last week we're the worst 5-1 and one team in football. But don't forget, we were underdogs going into Jacksonville. And the Giants fan took over Jacksonville. That's not TIAA Bank Stadium. That's MetLife South Edition. We're on to the next one. I think it's either Seattle or the Texans. Let me pull it up right now. Giants schedule. If it's Seattle... It is Seattle. It's, I feel like it's going to be a very similar game to this one. They have an offense that can be an explosive and a defense that could, you know, they're sneakily good. But we can really start off extremely strong this season. And uh, now part of it is going to depend on what's happening with Evan Neal. But let me give a shout out to the backup that came in. Phillips. I don't know his first name. Tyree Phillips. I might be wrong. He did a very commendable job. Shout out to him. Shout out to Bobby Johnson, our offensive line coach. In fact, we were all buying into Rob Sale and Mark Colombo, and we were all questionable of Bobby Johnson. He's doing a way better job than them. Than them. Our offensive line looks better than ever in passing and run blocking, in my opinion. Started off rough at the beginning of the year, but they improved vastly. And Bobby Johnson is working with less. He's working with a lot of injuries, so give him credit as well. But that's it for now, guys. 6-1 and one and rolling. Let me know your thoughts, and I'm out. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you for checking out my channel, The Hub, here on Giants YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you hear every time I put out a video. Like it, share, and subscribe, and I'm out.